Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the notification bell. If you hit the little like button, we appreciate that too. Um, in our last video, I installed a chain on this shovel head, my shovel head, and it's all well and good, but the video was getting so long and I had so many tools spread out and it was like I didn't call, feel like calling it quits and cleaning up the shop. So we decided to make a video number two to show adjusting that chain. And showing it, I think it's more a matter of, of getting a, a, an understanding of it. So I'm going to do it right now. The main thing to realize is what you're trying to do is to align the chain. To align the chain on its sprockets. That makes it live longer, that makes it smoother and nicer to ride. Chain maintenance is something nobody teaches anymore because all the newer bikes have belt drives. All the newer Harleys anyway. And I think that's wonderful, but I'm still riding bikes with chains, and I think it would be nice if they were aligned properly. Again, they last so much longer, and they're so much smoother to ride when they have proper alignment and proper maintenance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show here. There are tools for this. There are, are laser beams and things you can use, all of which I'm sure are great ideas. The way I do it is I sight right down the chain to see how straight it is. And then you rotate the wheel a few times and all of a sudden you can feel that it's smooth. You can feel that it's smooth because the teeth of the sprocket are not rubbing on the, on the chain plates, the outer plates of the chain. Chain's made up mostly of, <laughs> completely of rollers, pins, and plates. Now, if I look down this chain, I can see that it's pretty straight. I mean, I had a little time to play with it. Believe me, when I do a chain and I set it up and try to get it perfectly straight, I'll do it over and over again until I'm happy with it. Don't feel like the Lone Ranger if you get it all done and you look at it and you say, wow, it isn't really that straight. Do it again. It's no big deal. Okay. Not that your time isn't worth anything, but... For my motorcycle, I'll spend the time necessary. So looking down the chain, I can visualize that I've got a light here, and that's great. Now that I've got the light and I can look at it, what I want to do now is I want to put another light behind it. Let's see, what's he doing now? What I'm doing is I'm lighting it up so that I'm getting light on both sides of the sprocket teeth. The chain is not, or the chain is definitely traveling right when you have daylight on both sides of the sprocket teeth. When you can see daylight on both sides, that means that sprocket's not rubbing against those plates and everything is smooth. It will last 10 times as long Maybe an exaggeration, but it will last longer and it'll certainly be smoother, nicer, and easier on the sprockets, easier on the chain, and easier on the riders. Now, now that I've got it pretty straight, now I'm going to sneak up on tightening it. And I say sneak up because if I do it gradually, once I get the whole thing done, I'm going to have to go back over it again. And if I have to go over it two, three, four times, by the time I'm done going over it, I'll be pleased with it. Okay, now first thing, we want to get this thing on its wheel, on its weight, because I've got it to where I think it's pretty straight. Now I've got the adjusters moved right up to their point on both sides, and I find that it's pretty, pretty good. All's good in the hood. So let's... Uh, Let's lower it, get the weight of the bike on it, and see what it looks like. Well, gee, that is pretty close. 
what I wanted was a half inch, and here's a measuring stick. And I'd say I've about got it here. Let's see, let's take it down to the bottom. And then move it up. There's half an inch. Now we can get it a little better here. We get down here a little further. Now this is a new chain. It's going to loosen up right away. Okay, next thing is, let's tighten this sleeve nut. Get this sleeve nut tightened. Now I might add, I don't weigh very much. And there's nothing personal about that. It just has to be taken into consideration when I'm doing a chain. Chain has an easier time with me. That thing's a little tight. But I'm going to tighten it up right now and see what I got. That's not bad. Let's tighten this again. That sleeve nut is good and tight. Now I'm going to put the axle nut on. The adjusters are already adjusted. I've got them adjusted. Now when I tighten all this stuff up, it might very well throw this sprocket off. So I don't need to show off that, gee, I can do it in one try. I'd rather show off riding down the road with it running really smooth. Now we're going to tighten this to about 55, 60 pounds. Right about there. Now see, that is too tight. But I want to see how straight it is. So I'm going to jack it up again. Rotate the wheel and see if it's still straight. Look at that with the light coming in from the back. Yes, it is. It is still perfectly straight. Okay. But it's all tightened up and done, so what's a kid to do? I feel pretty good about it because now I know that my adjusters are right where they should be. They're all tight. Everything's tight. And the only thing wrong is that that chain is too tight. Perfect alignment, but too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off on this adjuster. Once. Twice. I did it three flats. Three flats. Well, we know the chain's straight. Okay. Now that adjuster, this is just the way I do it for myself. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. One. Let's see, where was I? Okay. One, two, three. Counting flats on the, on the, on the bolt itself. Now I'm going to Lock that one down with its lock nut. Because I moved both adjusters three flats each, the adjustment should be about the same. They should be even. So now I'm going to loosen that axle nut. And I'm going to have to loosen the sleeve nut, too. There is the sleeve nut. And now, as soon as I get it loose, 
We're going to use what my dad used to call a big beaten iron. Well, that's right up against the adjuster. Excuse me, Mike. Make sure it's forward on both sides, and it is. So now I'm going to tighten the axle nut, tighten the sleeve nut first. Now remember, if you have a drum brake, you've got more nuts and bolts on that thing and you've got to, to deal with it. There's one that goes through down here that's an anchor for the brake. And you've got to deal with all those things accordingly. But like I said when I started on this little series here, it's the principles you have to stick with. Okay, the sleeve nut is tight. Now we'll tighten the axle nut, and then we're going to look at that thing again and see that it's tracking straight. And let's see. Rotate the wheel and look at it. Yes, it is. It's tracking right down the middle of that sprocket. Or the sprocket's tracking right down the middle of the chain, however you want to look at it. Okay, now we're going to see. we we'll put this thing down on the deck again. Now that's fine for break-in. It's going to stretch a little bit. We could even tighten it up a little bit more before I go. I might just want to do that. Let's see. Yeah, we got, I think. You know what? That's just fine. That's just fine. We can take that out and enjoy it. And not forget to uh, check it after a, a short break-in period. I mean, a good little ride up and down the mountain and back should, uh, should take care of that. But it's ready to go. We already went over lubing chains. This one has its initial lube on it. I might be a little bit tempted to uh, put some other lube on it before I take it out. But that's it. All that's required now is uh, put the uh, chain guard back on and drop the saddlebags and go for a ride, which I think I'll do. If I'm real lucky, I'll see you out on the road.